What is up, YouTubes? Hope you've been well. Today we're going to be covering my bug out kit. Now, my bug out kit, you can see here splayed out across the entire table, is designed in a few separate layers. Uh, we can see here over on, onto the left hand side is the most essential of the entire kit. Because if you take a look at this entire spread, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. Um, I've weighed it. It's all under 18 pounds, which is substantially less than the um, 20 percent or even 10 percent allowment that I would give to myself for hiking uh, 10 plus 20 plus miles and so this allows me to stay light and fast while still having everything that I'm needing um, now if I needed to go ultra light this left hand side is just the five C's of survival and I added one extra C uh, big shout out to Dave Canterbury uh, we'll walk through that kit now and so we'll, we'll start going left to right walking through everything that I have here on the table, as well as a little extra bonus at the end of the video where I'm gonna walk you through uh, about a dozen or so items that you wanna add in addition to your bug out kit that's going to be, uh, it's going to help you in a I'm never coming home scenario, an inch scenario, a scenario where you're like, hey, this is beyond the 72 hours that's required in a typical bug out kit uh, and I'm expecting to stay five, six, seven days or maybe even never coming home, uh, which is the exact function. So first let's go through the, the, the bug out kit itself. So on the left hand side, we can see here that we have the five C's of survival per Dave Canterbury. I think it's a phenomenal system. Um, having spent a lot of time in the woods, I would 100% agree with that. Um, it starts the heat of the matter with your knife. Um, I've already got a video on this. This is the SC4. Um, I think it's a beautiful, um, well-made survival knife. It's got uh, an incredible 1095 carbon steel, throws sparks really well. Um, this is my, my sort of safe queen. I have the one that I beat up with, and then this is the one that I sort of keep in the bug out bag in last ditch scenarios. And so it allows me to have a brand new fresh knife uh, that's not rusted like my other one um, and allows me to, to enjoy it um, substantially. And so um, you wanna start with a really solid, um, ideally carbon steel knife that allows you to throw sparks on it um, and do all bushcrafting tasks and essentially be able to create everything from shelter to fishing hooks to spoons to whatever you need in order to survive in a long-term situation. And so you, the heart of, the heart of the, the, your any survival kit should start with a, a solid full tang knife. And I've got a separate video on that. There's a ton of videos on it. I think the SC4 is one of the best, most underrated survival knives uh, and so that's why I, I keep it in my system. It's not as comfy as a Mora. Um, I mean, the, the handles, I mean, definitely leave something to be desired. Um, to be honest, you know, the, these handles are, they're definitely a little harsh on the hands. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm holding a Mora, I'm like, man, um, I don't know if I can go back to the SC, but to me, this is like one of those knives where you're just like, uh, you know, you, you just feel like this is gonna last forever. But this is not about, about the, uh, the SC, so. Let's not spend too much time on that. So start with a knife. You wanna start with a knife. And then the next component is you wanna start with something that'll actually start with combustion. So the second C of survival is combustion. And this allows you to throw sparks, um, start a fire. And you know with a fire, you get so much. You can get a chance to boil water. You get a chance to have illumination. You could cook food. You could uh, protect yourself from predatory animals in the middle of the night. I mean, there's just so much that comes from fire that I, uh, gives you warmth. Now uh, you've got a little bit of shelter there. Um, so to me, like if you were only to have two things, I mean, with these two things, uh, it wouldn't be comfortable, but you could survive between the knife and combustion. And, you know, to be honest, there's nothing like a Bic lighter. Keep this in your pocket uh, when you are out in the woods and there is just wet foliage everywhere. You're struggling to find tinder. Uh, we've all been out there where we're spending an hour plus trying to start a fire uh, the traditional ways. Sometimes a big lighter will just get you, get it done, get you going, and even at least dehydrate some of your tinder and get some of that moisture out of it. So that way it will take a spark a little bit better. These things are bulletproof. Let's be real, like they're gonna last forever. And so you might as well have one of these. Um, one thing that, th this is just coming straight from my kit. I would just wrap this with some duct tape, uh, ideally Gorilla tape. Uh, that way you can have your cordage in addition to your, uh, your actual paracord. Uh, so you have some additional stuff. And so um, make sure you're wrapping that in, in, uh, in Gorilla Tape. That's actually something that I'll probably take as an action item right after here. I was just pulling this out of some random kit. 
The next is cordage. Um, there's a ton of these like sort of survival paracord that are on Amazon. Uh, this one is PS Cook uh, paracord. What I like about these, para these paracords, as you can see here, in addition to the traditional seven strands that you get in here, which allows you to essentially replace bank line, you can see here that there's actually uh, a red, if you can see that, there's a, a, a red inner strand. And this actually, you can fray this up and use it as tinder. And then you can't see it because it's it's actually, um, it's a clear, but there's also like a fishing line slash trapping line that's inside of here. You can kind of see it. It's it's pretty small, but you get the seven strands, you get the, uh, the tinder thread, and then in addition to that, you also get the trapping line. And so with that, you can go fishing, you can fashion some hooks from wood um, using your knife. You'll be good to go. Um, this will allow you to set up your shelter. Um, it allows you to, to, to do, I mean, I don't have to walk you through the hundreds of things you could do with uh, paracord and with cordage. Um, the next is container. And you wanna go with a single wall stainless steel container. Um, this allows you to dip it directly into the fire, uh, boil water, um, it allows you to, to actually clean your water and um, you know you can make sure that there's no pathogens, viruses, bacteria in your water. And so you, you, know, you wanna have a single walled stainless steel container. And so the one that I enjoy is the one from Clean Canteen. It's got a solid locking mechanism. I added a carbiner to the top so you can attach to the outside of any pack or to your belt if you don't have a pack. And so a uh, stainless steel container is really, really solid. Uh, the last of the fives is your cover. Uh, as you know, you know you 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 can survive three minutes without air, uh, three hours without shelter, and so it's one of the most critical components. And what I like about this particular tarp is it's actually a dual purpose. Number one, it allows you to avoid the rain, but on the inside, it's it's self-reflective, and so you can imagine a fire allowing the the heat to sort of reflect back into you. It allows you to um, you can wrap it around yourself in, in a scenario where uh, you just need to stay warm. Um, this is a six by eight survival shelter. Um, I really like it. It allows you to have some grommet holes in there. And so it's basically a survival shelter on steroids. Uh, and so I highly, highly recommend this one. It's really, really solid. And I think it'll allow you, it'll allow you to handle. So just with these five items, you could theoretically survive in the woods, your five seas of survival. Um, I did you know, allude a little bit in the beginning of the video that there was going to be a sixth C, and I consider that your clothes and your Cadillacs. And so you can see here my Solomon hiking boots. Um, you know, it, it really depends on what you're wearing. You know, if you're wearing really tight, you know, Italian leather dress shoes at work, and you're in a scenario where, like, hey, let's let's say, um, you know, I need I need to get out of this area. There's a, a structure fire or whatever. Um, you need to get out of there as quickly as possible. And like may, maybe you know you you want to create as much distance between yourself and the point of danger. And so you wanna have some good Cadillacs. And I know a lot of you guys, you know, you're always like 100% switched on. Um, you're always ready to go, but like, hey, like what if you're a lifeguard? You know, what if you're at the beach and you're in flip-flops? You do not want your feet looking like John McClane in Die Hard. You wanna make sure that you're taking care of your Cadillacs. The Cadillacs will allow you to get, get home, um, allow you to hike 10 plus miles, 20 plus miles, and remember, it's not just you, it's you know, your, your uh, immediate family. Is your wife always in flip-flops and heels? Make sure that she's taking care of her Cadillacs too. And so um, it's not just the cover, but it's also your clothes and your Cadillacs. And so I think that those are the six seas of survival. With just that, you will be ready to go. So uh, now that we've got that covered, now let's walk through the rest of the kit. So the rest of the kit, these are all just luxury items. These allow you to do a lot more and allow you to go through a lot more. And so we're gonna kind of go through this on a uh, left to right basis. So um, here is a little bit more about my shelter kit. And so you can see here, I have three contractor grade bags. Uh, these can be, serve a multitude of reasons. You can turn this into uh, a hammock if you cut through it and, and feed two, two sticks through it and fit it between two trees. Um, you can use it as a, as a makeshift poncho. You can use it um, to, as a, a ground cover and fill it with leaves in order to protect yourself from the ground and, and uh, allow you to uh, not absorb all of the cold and have the, your heat sucked away. There is a multitude of reasons you can use contractor grade bags. You wanna make sure you're using contractor grade bags with at least a three mil, if not a six mil of thickness. So it'll allow you to support that weight. Um, on top of that, I created these. Uh, I have these super lightweight 
pegs. And yeah, of course you could create pegs from, from you know, just fashioning it with, with uh, wood. But when you're out in the, in the woods and it's, you're trying to set up camp and it's pouring rain, and I've been there, it's pouring rain, you will get soaked within two minutes. And so while you're out there, you know, just shaving away at wood and trying to create your tent peg sticks, these are super lightweight. They weigh almost nothing. You can just immediately just hammer them down and at least get tent your, your, uh, your shelter set up. And then you can worry about the rest of the stuff. And then the last thing, if you've ever slept under a tarp, um, you know that especially down here in the South, uh, whether it's in Florida or in Texas, bugs are a major issue and they will prevent you from falling asleep. And so this is super lightweight. It is just a little mosquito net. Um, I think this is like, it's probably one of the, the best bangs for the buck. Um, you can put it over your face, it allows you know flies and mosquitoes from, from attacking you while you're trying to sleep. Um, in a long-term survival situation, you could use this as a, as a, as a net uh, in order to catch fish. Uh, why not? I mean, this thing is super lightweight, weighs almost nothing. You could use it as a little, you know, almost like a little grab bag, uh, no different than a dump pouch on your, um, on your tactical belt. Uh, speaking of which, make sure you check out that video in my channel. Um, it's actually one of my most popular videos about my tactical belt. Um, uh, a lot of, I think I have a really good mag dump pouch there. Um, so, so that's like, that's what makes up the rest of the survival kit. Um, a lot of times people don't, don't put enough emphasis on their electronics. You know, I know that like for the most part people, you know, they're like, Oh, like what about my knife and my fire? But it's like, Hey, like what if you just needed to call someone? And so to me, um, it almost feels like every time there's an emergency, you're almost always on low battery. And so having a battery bank, ideally a solar one, although these things are garbage, let's be real. It doesn't hurt to have solar, um, have a sol having a solar ba battery bank. And then more importantly, having the cables, uh, I love this one because it allows you to have a multitude of cables and so you can charge any, any number of devices. And uh, you know, I love ones that'll also tell you how much, how much the, the, the charge is left. And so you can double check, hey, do I have enough, char enough juice in order to handle this? And so um, the battery bank plus the cables I think is super critical. More blades, the, you can never have too many blades. And so the Baco Laplander is, I mean, if you've ever, tried to cut a bunch of wood with particularly something that's two to three inches uh, with a, a knife, you'll know you'll be out there all day or something like this. I mean, you could, you could cut through it in seconds. Uh, it just keeps your energy down, allows you to quickly fashion a shelter. Why not? I mean, it, it's, it's super lightweight. I think this is like 20 bucks. Every, every bug out kit should have a Baco Laplander sitting on it. Um, the next thing, this allows you to have a knife that you can keep in your pocket. So typically these two will go into my pocket. I do, I have a, vert, I usually wear uh, vertex pants so they have like a zippered component. And so let's say you take a drink, uh, this, these two stay in those pocket. And so between these two, you've got your knife and your fire making. It allows you to, um, to, to, to have pretty much everything you need. This is the, um, the Swiss Army or Victor Knox um, one-handed trekker. Um, I really like this over let's say something like the Skeletool because the main reason is the ergonomics. If you've ever gone in bushcrafting, um, this, this handle just feels phenomenal. I mean, it really feels great versus holding a block of steel like with holding a Skeletool or holding a, another Leatherman. Uh, it's really nice. It's got everything that you need. It's got um, a saw so you can you know, essentially replace the, the Laplander. Obviously it's not gonna be as good, but it allows you to quickly cut through smaller branches, it's got can openers and bottle openers, uh, screwdrivers. Um, you've got tweezers. Um, in fact, the toothpick, I think you can even replace with a small little mini fire steel. It's called the Firefly on Amazon. I need to pick that one up, uh, give that a test. Screwdrivers, I mean, this thing is phenomenal. 50 bucks, um, it's gonna last you forever. Why not throw it in your pocket and you'll, you'll at least have a solid backup ready to go. Um, Let's talk about candling, one of the, the tendencies of survival. And so I've got two, two functions for candling. Uh, number one, you've got this uh, awesome, this is from, what is this? This is from Black Diamond, a Black Diamond headlamp. Headlamps are phenomenal. It allows you to stay hands-free. Um, the reason that I like this one is that in addition to this standard, it has the red, which allows you to keep your night vision and allows you, allows you to stay stealthy if you are in a situation where you're trying to, to, to maintain a more low profile. And so this thing's phenomenal. It's got multiple different settings, high, medium, low, uh, as well as the red. And so 
Uh, it's a phenomenal, it tells you how much battery and juice is left on this thing. And I also maintain, I also keep uh, backup battery backs, battery packs um, over here. So that way you can, you can keep this going. So that's your, your headlamp. I think it's super critical, but also you want to have a handheld. Um, this thing's a thousand. This is from, this is actually from Black Scout Survival from WowTac. Uh, you can see here the Black Scout Survival logo. Um, Black Scout, if you guys are listening to this, man, this was such a phenomenal flashlight. I mean, it is, I love, I love this thing you know, with the crenulated bezel, uh, really aggressive uh, bezel here. I mean, honestly, I picked this thing up over my Surefire. I think this was 40 bucks. So Black Scout, if you guys could tag them in the comments, if you could bring this back, man, I'd buy two of them instantly. This thing's phenomenal. I think like one of the best bangs for the buck on Amazon. Um, if y'all could bring this back, this is such a phenomenal handheld knife. It ha I mean, handheld flashlight. It's got um, the battery inside. Let's see if I can pop this thing open is is um, a, a charge, a, yeah, from WowTech, a rechargeable battery. So like you can see here, so I can charge that if I needed to. I mean, this thing's phenomenal. Why, I don't, I don't know why y'all stopped making this, but um, Black Scout, if you can get this thing back in the stores, that'd be phenomenal. Um, by the way, I apologize for, for my hands bleeding everywhere. Um, I was doing a little bit of bushcrafting um, yesterday and um, you know, hey, it happens. Okay, so, um, so the handheld flashlight, uh, flashlight as well as your headlamp. Um, I keep two extra Bic lighters, you know, because, you know, one is none, you know, two, two is one and uh, three is two. So um, you got the one in the pocket, two in the pack. Why not? You know, it's, uh, if, you, if you've ever been in a place where you, you haven't been able to start a fire, you'll be, you'll be glad you had the extra, the Bic lighters. Uh, next is the med kits. So um, honestly, this is probably one of the best just overall kits in general um, uh, from, from Adventure Medical Kits. It really has everything you need. It has everything from like your Tylenols to your, uh, your, your stomach packs. Um, this, like it has, it has it all. It has like a little bit of uh, Benadryl kits. Um, it has even some electrolyte tabs. I mean, I think this is such like a well thought out kit. When I think about all of the meds that I have ever needed to take in the woods, it's almost always in this kit. Um, and if you want to do, you could throw in a couple extra band-aids, but you really only need this. And for more extreme emergencies, tourniquet, um, I think like 80% of fatalities could be eliminated by a tourniquet. And so you want to get the good ones. Don't buy this from Amazon. You could probably buy everything else from Amazon, but this is such an important life-saving device. Buy this from a reputable dealer where you can make sure that it's not being made with cheap plastic or cheap uh, cheap threading, and it's not going to break on you. This is, this is su such a critical, make sure it's staged properly. There's a ton of videos on that. Um, I believe skinny medic, um, I would go and support him. He's got, he's got some great information on there. So, um, go check his stuff out. Um, make sure you're getting the cat tournament. This is the gen seven. I've got a couple gen fives laying around here. So between this, this, and, uh, the next most important component, which is my uh, gorilla tape. I mean, this is black gold right here. I mean, you could literally do everything from fashioning your tarp to stitching up your shoes to uh, you can you can shred this up and turn it into tinder. Uh, this also you know work as a makeshift band aid. You know, if you cut yourself, you can just quickly put some some gauze on there and be ready to go. And so between the three of these, these sort of act as my 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 med kit. Uh, you can splint up an, uh, a rolled ankle. I've rolled a lot of ankles hiking in Seattle and uh, the Pacific Northwest, and uh, this thing has always come in clutch when when it's been a little bit more extreme and my ankle has been a little extra tender. And so why not throw that on there? Um, the next is navigation. So navigation components. Um, so to me, I have three, really like three major areas of the navigation. Number one is my compasses. And so you can see here, I have three separate compasses and why three? Well, if, you suspect one of them is broken. Let's say these are your two main compasses and you suspect one of them is broken. How are you going to verify which one of the two is broken? And now obviously you could use the sun and you can use uh, you know, the, the stars and you could probably, if you got your watch nearby, you could probably end up figuring that out. But why not? Let, I've got three separate Sunto compasses. This is my main one, this is my backup, and then this is my verifier. It's a nice little button compass. You can even slip this right onto um, your pack or your watch and always have a quick reading. So make sure you're not walking in circles. Um, they talk that, they call that, you know, uh, lateral, lateral drift 
when you're, you think you're walking in a straight line and you're actually just walking in circles and you wanna make sure you're actually heading in the right direction. So the three uh, compasses, super critical to make sure you're, you're heading in the right direction. You wanna get some ranger beads. Uh, yeah, you could guess how far you've been walking, but if you're walking multiple days, why not be sure? And so, you know, make sure you're, you're, you know how to use these. Um, but this allows, you know, it weighs nothing, allows it a certificate on the outside of your pack and allows you to know, hey, how far actually am I walking? Um, underneath this, I don't know if you could see this. You know what, let me just pull it out for you because why not? We're here on YouTube, we're all friends. Um, I live in Texas. This is a waterproof, this is from Mapsco, waterproof map. I've got some routes written out here in terms of getting home as well as, well as alternate routes for bugging out. And so this is a waterproof map. It allows you to keep it open. It's waterproof and tear resistant. It's a really solid map and allows you to uh, make sure you're heading in the right direction. So with the compasses as well as the ranger beads, it allows you to make sure you're navigating in the right direction. Um, on that note, um, aqua tabs, you know, yeah, you could, you could probably go and set up a fire, but like sometimes who has time? And so this, is, this um, allows you to have, just quickly throw this in there within 30 minutes, you get clean water. And so this weighs almost nothing at all. Why not have some aqua tabs and put that with your, your medical kit? Um, speaking of medical, um, if, imagine if you're in a forest fire um, and you need to get out. Why not have some masks and, a, and some goggles ready to go? So I've got a couple different styles of masks um, just as a representation of which ones you would, you would prefer. But the goggles have multiple purposes. Number one, make sure you're, you're not, your eyes aren't uh, going crazy and uh, being able to see if you're going through some smog or some folk, uh, some, some, some smoke. But also, um, you could imagine if you were, let's say, bugging out into the woods and you're having to walk through some pretty thick brush, um, you don't want those, those branches to be smacking you in the face and potentially poking you in the eye. And so why, do, why not have some goggles ready to go? Um, goggle, uh, gloves. I mean, as you can see here, you know, if you're not extra careful, like between your Cadillacs and your hands, I mean, uh, you want to talk about your chance of survival going way down. If you, if you mess up your feet or you mess up your hands, I mean, you, you're, you're in a world of hurt. And so get yourself a pair of nice gloves that allow you to work and operate properly. Inside of these gloves, I've included a couple of nitro gloves. So it allows you to, uh, if you needed to, from a medical perspective, um, take, care, take care of that. So make sure you're, you're handling, handling that stuff um, and making sure you're taking care of that properly. So um, the gloves there, cash, you know, make sure you have some, some cash on hand. Make sure you have um, not only some 20s, keeping it in like good solid bills, but also some ones. Um, you know, maybe you can flag someone down and be like, hey, do you mind if I get a, a ride home? Um, and allows you to, to make sure you've got cash. I've also, I also keep a $100 bill uh, in the back of my iPhone case. So that way I can make sure that, hey, you know, if I, if I left my wallet at home, no matter what, I've got some cash on hand. Um, the next thing, um, while food, food is probably not super critical, uh, what, it, it definitely helps. And so this is sort of, uh, these are emergency ration bars, 2,400 calories. I've tasted these before. They, you know, they essentially taste like, like crackers, like graham crackers. Um, and so it allows you to have some quick, non-cookable needed meals. And so you can quickly have some, some calories on the go. Um, and in addition to, I keep a, a, a water bottle. Um, why not have some, some emergency water ready to go? And so this allows you to just be able to quickly crank this open. So between these two, you can have some, some water packs as well as some emergency rations. And so you have some water to, ready to go. Um, these are, these are uh, excellent. They are not super critical, but it definitely, definitely helps. Uh, the water is definitely critical. So if you're not in an area where you can uh, procure a bunch of water, I make sure I keep a water bottle in my backpack at all times, at least a liter, if not more, uh, two liters. If you've, if you've never hiked 20 plus miles, you typically go through about five. I, I went through about five liters. And so if you, if you don't have that mapped out in your route where you can scoop up more water, uh, make sure you're having enough water ready to go. And so uh, I think that's super important. And then the last, this is the thing that you can see that's on the bottom. Um, this is a 100% wool blanket. And so between that and my, my actual tarp, um, you can stay very warm. Even if wool gets wet, it'll still keep you warm. And so it'll allow you to, um, you know, between the two of those, as well as the mosquito net um, and this shelter kit, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be able to sleep outside for, for, for days at a time, very comfortable. 
Um, you might even get a little hot in Texas. Uh, you might not even need that, but you know, why not have that in there and be ready to go? And so that's pretty much it. That's the bug out kit. It gives you pretty much everything you need in order to, to, to last. Oh, one last thing. Um, in case comms go down, um, this is a cheap Bofang ham radio. Um, both me and my wife have one and we know which frequency to be on in case of emergency, in case, hey, like during emergency, I don't know if you remember, like um, in a lot of emergencies, sometimes phone lines went down. I don't know if you all remember about 20 years ago, 9-11, it was hard to even get text messages through. And so being able to quickly hop on ham radio, be like, hey, honey, I'll meet you at home. Um, you know, be able to, to circumvent everything else. And so just, just keep a, a ham radio handy. Uh, and then this is, Sort of, um, these two are, are part of my EDC. Um, this is um, pepper spray, uh, another small little, this is an Olight. This thing's phenomenal, by the way. Um, let's see if it's, oh, there we go. Probably see that. Um, so you get a nice little backup flashlight. Um, this thing's phenomenal too, a little Kershaw blade. And so it's part of my EDC, a little bottle opener. Um, and then a tack pen. Um, you want, what, between the pepper spray, the tack pen, uh, you, you want certain levels of elevation in terms of your, um, in terms of your, let's say, I guess you can call it just like escalation of violence. Uh, so between the tack pen and the pepper spray before you go to the firearm, which I always keep on me, Glock 19 um, with a full mag. And so uh, you can just have those. Those are just part of my EDC. And so they're gonna be part of my bug out kit in general. So I hope this gave you some, um, some ideas in terms of things to, to go through. Um, so if you just had that, if you just had this, you'd be ready to go. If you, if you needed this, these are like more, more extra fun things. Um, so let's walk through what else I would add. So what else I would add um, is probably this comfort kit. And so this has some bug spray, some TP, some extra socks. Um, I didn't include socks as part of this overhead kit because I'm, I'm rarely more than one day's hike from home, but you know, it never hurts to have an extra pair of wool socks, extra pair of underwear, uh, some wet wipes, uh, some, some hand sanitizer. Um, so this is sort of like a, a little comfort kit and allows you to um, stay extra comfortable if you needed to. And so you can add that there. Um, this is also, you, typically I have multiple trauma kits in my car and so I can throw that on there. And in here, you've got some nitrile gloves, uh, two pairs of that. Um, in addition to the tourniquet that we mentioned, you've got a bunch of, you've got a high vents chest seal. You've got some uh, emergency dressings. You've got some, some sea locks, some gauze. And so um, we, if you guys wanted me to do a, a video on my trauma kits, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to walk through. This is a nice Maxpedition bag. And so you've got that ready to go. And so you can have the, the trauma kit ready to go. Um, in addition to that, I always keep this kit. This kit is basically my ultra small survival kit. And if you look in my channel, it's called the TSA. This is what I travel with, the TSA friendly survival pack. You can see here, we've got some wire saws. You've got some suntan lotion, uh, suntan lotion, uh, some sunblock, uh, another one of those multi-charger kits, towel, uh, some more med stuff. Um, another compass. So I might have this, I might bring this along if I'm in a never coming home scenario. Uh, so it's got a bunch of other stuff. So now we're gonna go through some of the things where it's like, hey, if we were needing to stay out in, in, uh, you know, in an I'm never coming home scenario, what potential other things could I bring um, that allow me to best prepare for more than three days in the woods, that allow me to prepare for a scenario where, hey, I need to stay away from home for let's say a month at a time. I, I either need to go to a hotel that's in my state, a hotel that's out of my state, or maybe even in a scenario where I, I just need to get out of the country for a few days, go visit some family, let's say in Canada or Mexico, um, and just see how things, things are shaking up. And so let's walk through what else you could potentially bring. So in no particular order, uh, I'm just gonna walk you through a couple, couple potential items. Um, why not bring an extra knife? Uh, an extra full fixed blade knife. Um, I love the Mora. I think it's a phenomenal knife. If you don't have one of these, maybe two of these are 20 bucks. They're phenomenal. Um, I think it's one of the best bangs for the buck. Honestly, these things should be twice the price. Um, don't tell Mora that. These things are phenomenal. Why not have another fixed blade knife just for peace of mind? Keep that going. Um, on that note, why not just have like a small little uh, pocket sharpener? You know, just keep, keep, you're gonna be using your blade quite a bit. So keeping your blade a little sharp, this thing has both a coarse and a fine, uh, as well as a honing steel. 
And so this thing weighs absolutely nothing at all. So you can have that going for you. Um, we talked a little bit about the um, AquaTabs in terms of water purification, but actually my favorite just pure water pur purification system is the Catadyne. Um, this allows you to, number one, have a separate container in order to scoop up your dirty water. Um, but then also it allows you to... Um, it allows you to double check whether or not this filter is working properly, um, particularly because of if you blow into this thing and this thing does not fill up with water, that means your seal is still still perfect. And so you want to keep that going. Um, oh, by the way, I just realized I didn't I didn't underneath all of this is a cotton bandana. So this allows you to if you were to scoop up some dirty water, put the cotton bandana overneath this, uh, fit this on. And it allows you to filter your water properly and not, not get the gunk inside here. And so this thing is, is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, I, I, I love this thing. And it's actually the thing that I travel with. And so I'll put this next to my travel kit um, because between the two of these, I used to have the Grail filter, but it was just too heavy. This thing's super lightweight, compacts to nothing. Why not? Next is um, a pocket SAS survival kit. Um, you know, if you needed to forage for food, uh, build some traps or shelters, just have some boring reading to go through. You know, if you're just bored and you wanted to read something. Um, I mean, this thing weighs nothing at all uh, in a long-term survival scenario. If you get one thing from this that helps save your life, it'll, it'll be worth the extra weight. And so a little pocket SAS survival kit doesn't hurt. Um, the next is a, this is the Stanley two cup system. Um, if you didn't want to dip your uh, main canteen in the fire, or more importantly, didn't want to wait for the, the, the water to cool down, um, you, can, you could be boiling water in one system or cooking in another system. This thing has two cups inside of it for, for hot drinks. Uh, you could be boiling water with one, pouring it into the other. And so you can essentially have two stainless steel containers that allow you to uh, go, through, go through your system uh, a little, little better. And so this, this is like a little pocket stain, Stanley. And then um, if you wanted something to, to cook on, um, if you've, you know, if you've ever tried to s structure a fire, sometimes it takes forever. So what I like about this, these are uh, super small pocket survival kit or pocket stove kit. It allows you to put the cook right there. These are little fuel tabs. So you just light these on fire. They're, they're super flammable and they typically have enough energy to boil one pot of water. And so between these two, you can have a, a nice hot meal ready to go. And for a little extra morale, I'll probably include two of these Kuju coffee. This is basically like a pocket pour over kit. And so uh, if you need a little bit of extra juice, a little extra caffeine in the morning, you can use the Kuju coffee system, uh, pour it right into the cups inside of there. I've used this all the time. It's phenomenal. It creates a, an excellent brew of coffee. Um, so, some other things, um, some bolt cutters, some, some, some bolt, bolt cutters. If you did want to um, go through, um, let's say, you know, I'm not saying to, if you needed to, you know, get, get through a chain link fence or uh, if there's a, a lock or a chain blocking you or preventing you, um, you know, have this in your car, you know, like if, if in a true survival situation and let's say there's a fire and you had to cut through some private property in order to escape the fire, I'm sure that they wouldn't mind. And so why not include that on there? Um, let's say you're staying out in the woods, you know, for four or five days and you're getting low. You know, this is, this is not going to cut it if you're in the woods for four or five days. You're going to eventually get hungry. And you, so you're going to need, other than using the, the cordage to set up traps, why not have an easier way in order to catch squirrels and other, other, other uh, varmints? And so a nice and easy is this, uh, this little super lightweight mouse trap with a few peanut butter packs. And so, um, you know, if I'm, you, can, you can set this up near, near your camp, put a little bit of peanut butter inside of there, and you'll wake up to some fresh squirrel for breakfast. So I know it sounds ridiculous, but hey, these are just ideas that you may, may put out there. Um, why, in a true, you know, uh, shit hits the fan scenario, you'll probably need some more ammunition for your primary firearm. And so have a fun stick, you know, 33 rounds ready to go in your backpack. And so you'll, you'll be able to be, uh, 
more well-armed. Uh, in addition to that, um, I also have a sub 2000. So that way it's in my backpack, ready to go. You can pop it open, use the same Glock mags as my Glock 19. And so it allows me to stay lightweight and ready to go. So uh, you've got that. So now we're gonna go into some other stuff. Um, if, you, if you had this battery pack, let's be real, this one's probably not gonna take, uh, it's probably not going to charge via sun. And so um, I did love the Goal Zero. What I love about the Goal Zero is it's got the solar, which you know is a nice little added bonus, but it's also got a crank. And so if you did need some, um, this allows you to, to charge your phone. It allows you to have uh, a flashlight, an extra flashlight. Um, but also allows you to have a torch. And so you can hang this from your shelter and have illumination in all directions if you wanted to be a little stealthier and didn't want to have um, a fire going and you wanted to just be have some illumination, you can have that ready to go. In regards to procuring more food, um, a small little um, fishing kit. You can have some, some, some more monofilament line. Uh, you could probably break this down even more. Uh, with fishing hooks and with lures, um, you'll probably find some some worms and grub nearby. My philosophy is like, you know, it's probably probably more than you need, but you can always ditch stuff, right? You can always be like, you know what, this is just wasting my time and throw it away. The last thing you want to do is have to sit there and be fashioning crappy hooks from wood uh, that end up just breaking when you catch your first fish. And so, why not have you know a couple fish, uh, a couple fishing hooks? in your uh in your pocket um on that note you know you you probably doesn't hurt to have a right in the rain pad include some of your more important phone numbers in it shit hit the, hits the fan scenario in a scenario where you know you're you're freaking out or you know there's so much going on put those important phone numbers on there so that way you can uh you can make sure that you're you're being able to call them maybe you've lost your phone and in today's day and age most of our most important phone numbers uh, are not memorized, or maybe you only remember one or two, and what if those two people are not reachable? And so being able to have some more important phone numbers across the board. And then also the most important uh, radio frequencies for your ham radio, have those written down. Mountain House, um, I mean, your bunkmate's not gonna appreciate you. I can tell you that, they're, uh, but hey, you know, this thing is, it, it tastes good and uh, it's easy to cook. You boil up some water, you throw it in there, you'll be ready to, ready to start grubbing. Uh, and then the, the, the next component is the, it's just like a lightweight boonie hat, you know, just keep the sun off you. And so you can throw that on there and you can make sure that the sun's on you. And now the, the, the next few components are in a true, you know, hey, I need to, I need to get out of Dodge. I need to, I need to bug out. Um, I need, I need to, to figure something out. Um, so some premier body armor, I'll throw that in my, in my Vertex backpack. I have a video on the Vertex backpack, and so you'll put some, some body armor in there and be ready to go. And then the next component is figuring out, um, hey, how do I maintain mass stores of value? And so you wanna have some of your more important documents. So in case you need to cross the border, um, you've got those documents ready to go. Uh, and then the next component is stores of value. So a Rolex, you know, if you needed to trade this for a, a car, it's like, hey, you've got, you've got this. I know um, um, some Navy SEALs will, will, have, will be wearing a Rolex when they're abroad in order to trade that Rolex for a car in case they needed to get out of the country. And then also some precious metals, uh, whether that's silver or gold, it allows you to uh, quickly exchange them for those that know what this means. And it allows you to, uh, yeah, to, to get, you know, at least, at least have some extra stores of value beyond cash in case needed. And so this is it. I mean, this is, this is, this is well beyond everything else. You've got, you know, the, the core five, if you just needed the five plus the Cadillacs, um, that's really all you need. You don't need everything here, but Hey, I hope this gives you a few extra ideas that allow you to know, Hey, uh, if it, whether it's, it's bugging out for three days or for 10 days or for 30 days, you've got everything here in order to create a, a solid list. Um, if you're interested, I'm happy to put a list of the materials down in the description. Just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to, to, to put that together for y'all. Um, but I hope this is, this is helpful. Um, make sure you subscribe. You know, I'm a brand new channel, um, you know, just trying to get started. Uh, definitely be working on creating a lot more content similar to this. And so if you found this helpful, 
you found even one thing or like, oh, I should probably pick that up if, if that was helpful, you know, put together. This, is, this, this video probably took me a few hours to put together. And so um, I hope you all appreciated the effort that went into this and I uh, hope you give me a subscribe and uh, look forward to the next one. Thanks everyone.